Welcome back to Harbour Unbox for another benchmark video. This time we're looking into the possible performance impacts caused when addressing the two now famous security flaws, Mountdown and Spectre. In my last video, I benchmarked the Windows update intended to address the Mountdown vulnerability, and I did this from a desktop user's perspective, or more precisely, a content creator slash gamer. What I found was virtually no impact on gaming performance, so good news for gamers, and there was also no impact for content creators either. What I did find though were a few troubling results for NVMe storage devices, and this mostly impacted 4K read performance. Uh, since then, a few major tech outlets have also published similar findings, so those issues weren't just limited to my own testing. Overall though, for a typical PC user, or perhaps more importantly, at least on this channel, a gamer, addressing the meltdown vulnerability wasn't a big deal. There was, however, a second vulnerability that needed to be addressed, but that one would require a firmware update, or more precisely, a motherboard BIOS update. You've no doubt heard of Spectre by now, and this one is a result of a fundamental flaw in the CPU's design. As I understand it, and keep in mind I'm far from a security expert, we mostly test PC games and relating hardware at Harbour Unbox, but we're doing our best to cover this topic because it could affect our audience, and benchmarking can help us understand what the performance impacts might be. So, as I understand it, because Spectre is the result of a fundamental CPU design flaw, it can't be fixed, at least not entirely, and not without replacing the CPU. The firmware update, or the BIOS update, mitigates the problem but doesn't completely address the vulnerability. This is also still primarily an Intel CPU flaw. It is reported by AMD that one of the two Spectre variants doesn't impact them at all while the other one does, but is easily resolved by a software update that shouldn't impact performance in any meaningful way. Variant 3, which is now well known as Mountdown, doesn't impact AMD at all, and this was covered in my previous video. I'm yet to properly test any AMD CPUs, so you'll have to sit tight for a moment while we focus on a few Intel CPUs. Since posting the Mountdown benchmark video, we now have access to BIOS updates, and they do deliver the microcode updates necessary to mitigate the spectra of vulnerability, and so far this has happened on Intel's latest Z370 platform. This update changes the behavior of Intel's branch prediction to be less aggressive. This will likely mean less effective branch prediction, and that means reduced IPC as the execution pipelines wait for memory access more often. Of course, we will get to the benchmarks in a moment, but before we do, I just have a few more notes I'd like to cover. Right now, at the time of shooting this video, the only motherboard manufacturer to release an update is ASUS, and so far they've only addressed their Z370 series of motherboards. Unfortunately, I don't actually own an ASUS Z370 motherboard, believe it or not. Uh, I have models from every other brand but ASUS. So that meant 48 hours ago, I raced down to my local PC store and purchased the ASUS TUF Z370 Plus Gaming for this test. I then went back and benchmarked the Core i3-8100 without the Windows update, and then again with the Windows update, and then a third time with the Windows update plus the latest BIOS update, which included the microcode update. I've included some of the updated Core i7-8700K benchmarks as well. Once you've installed the Windows update, you can install a PowerShell module called Speculation Control, and this will allow you to check if the update has worked by typing Get Speculation Control Settings. With just the Windows update installed, which only addresses the Meltdown vulnerability, this is what you'll see. All three requirements for Meltdown, aka Rogue Data Cache Load, are greenlit and set to true. For the branch target injection, aka Spectra vulnerability, only OS support is present, but not yet enabled, as we still require a microcode update. Once the BIOS has been updated with the required version, this is what you'll see. Okay, so that's all the updates we have so far. It's time to run some tests and see if there's any performance penalties. Let's start with the Core i3-8100 results. Oh, and please note, all results are based on an average of at least three runs. First up we have the Core i3 Cinebench R15 results, and very little has changed here. From the pre-update configuration we see less than a 2% reduction in the multi-thread score, and 1% for the single thread score, so that's pretty well within the margin of error. Now this is a little more interesting, the Windows patch plus the BIOS update was consistently 3% slower than the previous test configurations. Please note that lower is better for this test as we're measuring the time it takes to complete a render. So the BIOS update cost us 9 seconds, but as I said, overall a very minor reduction in performance. 
Moving on, we have Excel. And once again, the Excel workload goes unchanged. We see the same six second completion time, so really nothing to report here. Moving on, we find the same with the Blender render test. All configurations took 58 seconds to complete the test. We also find no real performance differences when testing with Veracrypt. The AES encryption and decryption results are all much the same. Then we have some 7-zip results, and here we see no noticeable decline in performance with the Windows and BIOS update applied. The Geekbench 4 compute test also shows similar performance with the updates installed. Geekbench also has a slew of CPU benchmarks, and each category gets its own score. As you can see, the crypto and memory scores are all much the same. We see a 3% reduction for the integer and floating point scores, with just a 2% reduction for the multi-core score. Okay, well, it looks like the applications and synthetic tests didn't really give us much. Uh, let's move on to the games to see if they have any scary numbers. So here we are, our first game benchmark result, and well, things don't look that dramatic. We do see about a 4% reduction in performance, and the Core i3-8100 was consistently slower in this test by a 3 to 4% margin. Also, for those wondering, the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti, an insanely overpowered GPU for the Core i3 CPU, is used to try and remove the GPU as a potential bottleneck, and this gives us a better idea of the impact the CPU has on gaming performance. For a slightly more realistic test though, we have boosted the quality preset from medium to ultra, and again, we see the same 4% reduction in performance with the Windows and BIOS updates installed. Moving on, we have Ashes of the Singularity Escalation, and again, we see a 3-4% to reduction in performance with these updates installed. Not a massive decline, but a reduction in frame rate all the same, and again, the update configuration did consistently come in lower. Even with the crazy preset enabled, we still see the same 3-4% drop in frame rate. Assassin's Creed Origins isn't GPU bound here. The 1% low results with the 8700K, for example, reach around 90 FPS. So while these results certainly look GPU limited, I can assure you they aren't. So that being the case, the BIOS update does deliver similar performance to that of the pre-updated configuration, certainly within the margin of error. Even with the ultra high quality settings enabled, we're still not GPU bound, despite all three configurations delivering the exact same results. I had honestly thought we might see some larger margins in Rainbow Six Siege, but that wasn't the case. In fact, here we see almost no difference at all with the medium quality preset. Shifting to the ultra quality settings doesn't really change anything, and again, we see that the BIOS update has no negative impact on performance for this title. The results in F1 2017 also go largely unchanged, though this time we do see a dip in the 1% low results. That said, it's nothing more than a 3% reduction. The same 3% drop for the 1% minimum can be seen with the ultra high quality settings, though again the average frame rates are all much the same. The last game that I've tested with the Core i3-8100 is Total War Warhammer 2, and here we see a 4% drop in frame rate for the 1% low result, while the average remains much the same. Then with the ultra quality settings, we see almost no change in performance, as all three configurations provide similar results. But what about the Core i7-8700K? How does it get on with the BIOS update? Well, all the application and productivity tests were all much the same, so I'm not going to throw a heap of graphs at you showing absolutely nothing all over again. Uh, so we'll just move on and have a look at a couple of games. Here we see that the Battle for One performance using the medium quality preset allows for similar 1% low results, while the average dips by a 3% margin. With the ultra quality preset, we see virtually the same results. Uh, the Windows update actually boosted the average frame rate by 2%, which is of course still within the margin of error, so I wouldn't read too much into that result. Using the high quality preset, we see virtually no change with Ashes of the Singularity. This is also true with the crazy quality preset enabled. Then finally, we have Assassin's Creed Origins, and again, the margins are very slim here. With the BIOS update enabled, we saw the 1% low figure reduced by 2%, while the average frame rate remained much the same. Then with the ultra high quality preset enabled, we see no difference in performance at all. Okay, moving on, what about storage performance? This was the only area where we saw any real impact last time. Let's start with the Samsung SSD 950 Pro NVMe drive on the Core i7 8700K system. Here we see a 5% reduction in throughput for the sequential write test, an 8% reduction for the 4K 64 thread write test, and a 20% reduction for the 4K write test. This is all seen when comparing the pre-update configuration to the Windows update with BIOS configuration. Read performance though, that's all pretty much similar across the board, it's just the writes that look to have taken a hit. 
Moving on, we find some even more extreme results when testing with Crystal Disc Mark. The sequential read and write performance all looks okay. Then we get to the 512K write test and well, what's gone wrong here? A 41% reduction in performance can be seen and this wasn't a once off deal. I ran this test a dozen or so times after multiple resets to try and work out if it was just some kind of glitch, but every time this is the result I got. Interestingly though, the 512K read performance isn't nearly as heavily impacted. Just an 8% reduction here, though that's still certainly very noteworthy. Then when we move to the 4K Q depth of 32, we did find a 10% drop for both the read and write results. The single 4K write performance is also reduced by 19% with the BIOS update, while the read throughput goes unchanged. I then decided to do some testing with Addo Disk Benchmark, and oh boy, what has gone wrong here? Both the sequential read and write test took a massive hit, and again, throughput was reduced by as much as 40% with the BIOS update enabled. So if this has happened to NVMe SSDs, what does this mean for your more run-of-the-mill SATA SSDs then? Well, here's the Samsung SSD 850 EVO 2TB with the Core i3-8100, and here we do see some declines. Again, the sequential read and writes for the Crystal Mark test, they do look okay. In fact, they look quite good. The 512 kilobyte read and write performance is also very good this time. The 4K Q depth of 32 results, though, they do see a small decline of around 3%, so nothing too alarming. That said though, we do still see some big hits for the 4K transfers, which is interesting. Writes dropped by 27% and reads by 19%. Then again, we have some Addo Disk benchmark results, and again, we do see some performance drop-offs here. Oddly though, this time the read results don't actually seem to suffer, but the write throughput certainly does. Here we see up to a 17% reduction in write performance with the BIOS update applied, and that's certainly a noteworthy drop-off for a SATA device. Okay, so we've got a bit to talk about here. Uh, I want to start by saying, please take those storage results with a grain of salt, at least for now, until they can be confirmed with at least one other reliable source. I wouldn't go too crazy over the potential performance impact here. I'm not sure if this is something we're going to see others reporting, or if this is just an issue I ran into with my particular hardware configuration. I have though come across a test done by Guru3D which does show up to a 33% reduction in performance with the Samsung SSD 960 Pro 2TB NVMe drive and this was for the 4KB Q depth of 32 test so that's somewhat in line with what I saw. They didn't test with Addo unfortunately though. They did also test with an ASUS motherboard so perhaps it's an issue with the ASUS BIOS update and they'll be able to address that or possibly this is just what the band-aid looks like. As always though, time will tell. I should also note that I was able to revert the BIOS back to the previous version and doing so did restore the original SSD performance. Horrible storage performance aside, we constantly saw less than a 5% reduction in gaming performance. You're probably looking at more around a 3 to 4% drop and that's when you are CPU limited. Less, of course, when you are GPU limited. SSD performance, that doesn't really impact frame rates. So we've seen this in the past when comparing slow hard drives to ultra snappy SSDs. There's really nothing to gain there. Where a drop in storage performance can hurt is with the game load times. And this is something we'll dive into in the future should our storage figures prove accurate, of course. Then we have the more commonly used applications like Excel and 7-Zip, for example, which seem unaffected using either the Core i3-8100 or Core i7-8700K processors, and we found little to no impact for those doing content creation type work as well. But what about older CPUs, you know, your Wells and Bridges and older 45 nanometer processors? Well, as it stands right now, we can't actually test those. It's possible to test the impact of the Windows 10 meltdown patch, but it's not yet possible to test the impact of the big one, Spectre. For this, we need BIOS updates for older motherboards supporting those CPUs. When or if we get them at all is a bit of an unknown at this stage. We haven't found a motherboard maker that really wants to give us the inside scoop. One thing is for sure though, this is a mess of epic proportions and it will still require further OS and BIOS updates. This is really just the start to close these security flaws. Uh, it's also just the start of Intel's pain. Uh, already there are three class action complaints that have been filed against Intel over these CPU security flaws, their potential impact, and also Intel's response time to address them. Intel can no doubt expect to face further lawsuits as well. And not only are these security risks a serious issue, but the impact addressing them uh, has on businesses is also very serious. 
As another example, before I switched my attention to focusing on this BIOS update, I was way steep in benchmarking Fortnite. I've got another one of those 40 plus GPU showdowns in the works. Anyway, I bring this up because on the last day of testing, I was running into a few login problems, which was quite unusual for Fortnite. Uh, the issue was I often had to wait 15 or even 20 minutes before I could get into a game, and that is just to load the game, uh, at which point I would run my test, shut it down, install a new GPU, fire it up, and sure enough, had to wait another 15 to 20 minutes to get back into the game. So I quickly gave up on that and thought I'd give it a shot later when they addressed whatever the problem was, and I moved on to testing something else. At the time though, I do remember thinking to myself, this is just a day or so after the meltdown exploit started to get addressed. Wouldn't it be funny if that was the reason for the busy servers? Well, turns out not that funny because that was the exact reason, or at least this is what Epic Games are saying, uh, for the login issues. Soon after the login problems began, the Fortnite team made a post on the Epic Games forums as they wanted to bring the issue to the community's attention and explain what was going on. Turns out the updates required to mitigate the meltdown vulnerability were slowing the servers down by causing massive spikes in CPU utilization. And at that point they had just patched a single service and that one caused CPU utilization to triple. They also note that there's more pain to come, but they'll do their best to manage the situation. No doubt we're gonna keep hearing stories like this as more companies update their servers over the coming days and weeks. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap this up as it has no doubt been a very long video. So thank you for watching the whole way through if you did. Uh, there's certainly more testing that still needs to be done and I'm eager to see what others find when it comes to the storage performance. That's obviously an area to focus on. Uh, for now though, your frame rates look pretty safe and applications that aren't storage sensitive will also perform much the same. As I've said, much more testing needs to be done but I've been chipping away at this for two days straight now with almost no rest. So yeah, it's time to get some rest and see what others dig up. If you liked the video, please leave a like. And if you'd like to support our work directly, then please check out our Patreon account. The link is in the video description. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.